Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor Barton. So glad you're here. Good morning, those that are out on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Internet. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You're going to learn something today. That if you don't know this and practice it, the devil is beating the tar out of you. You're getting whooped every day of your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Written by Paul to a... He wrote several epistles, you know what they are, they're letters. And when he wrote them, they were just one long letter. This was the second letter to the Corinthians, Corneth, the church there. And it was a very worldly church, a very, very worldly church. It was a big uh, uh, seaport. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. The meekness and gentleness of Christ. Isn't that a nice little saying? Who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. When, when, when Paul was around, he didn't say much. He's a meek and mild guy. But he's a heavy preacher. These, these letters are, are heavy. These letters are uh, weighty and powerful. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Now this is, get this. You ought to memorize it. I mean, this is it. For though we walk in the flesh, that's flesh and blood. What we all, everybody here is flesh and blood. Living, breathing, flesh and blood. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now the only wars we can have down here between um, America and China, America and Russia, America and North Korea, so on and so forth. The wars down here, they're all fought in the flesh. Military power is the boss. Verse 4, here's us as, this is for Christians. Now if you're a Christian, you don't have this option. For though the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, so, if I carry a big gun in my pocket or got one in my house, or if I got an AR-15 or a 9mm in my pocket, or uh, if I got one guy there in Tampa, my, my, my son, uh, uh, Eddie, Steve's daddy. You know, hey, Steve, your daddy's becoming real spiritual. I'm not kidding, man. Have you talked to him lately? The guy reads the Bible all the time now, and you know what? He reads. He sent me. He sent me a sermon two days ago of Lester Roloff. You ever heard of Lester Roloff? You ever hear Lester Roloff preach? Oh man, I'll send you his. I mean, he's a heavy preacher. He is old time. Lester Roloff. He said he listens to Lester Roloff. He listens to me. He listens to high, he listens to heavy preachers. Your daddy. You know what? Out all my I'm got to say this out there that right now, the the most spiritual. I think I don't care what the rest of you say. Say what you want. Prove it to me. I think Eddie is is the most spiritual relative I have right now, bar none. Eddie. No, not Steve. <laughs> but let me tell you what Steve's better than most of them at least I can get them to come to church <laughs> amen Steve sticks with me God bless you Steve you're my buddy wish I could get him to do a little more air conditioning work for me though I gotta pay <laughs> he's I'm busy I'm busy now nah, he's gonna have some time off I'm gonna use you now oh he says no I'm going out of town <laughs> I love Steve. Steve's my buddy. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
You know what the strongholds are, Bill? You know what they are? They're demons. I got all kinds of people, relatives and others. You know what I'm, I'm Are you looking for someone? You figure your husband going to come over? Huh? Is he going to come in? He ain't going to pull you out the door, is he? I refuse to leave you. Once you start a service in here, you can't leave. What? Are you worried about it? Bring it inside. Go get it. Pull it. Push it in the door. Hurry up. Move fast. Help her, Matthew. Pull her bike in. <laughs> I don't want to be worried about that bike all day. <laughs> Where are you going, Steve? She's got. She's got it. No problem. Oh, it was right by the front door. All right. Yeah. Just leave it there. It's going to be safe and secure. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God is pulling down the strongholds. Strongholds. Demons. I'm talking about them demons that make people go crazy like my son. I'm a, I'm a grandson. I'm going to be eating lunch with him today. Stephen's going with us too. My wife. Demons are dragging him through a mess here several months back. Oh, Grandpa, don't blame it on demons. It's bipolar. There ain't no such thing. It don't exist. <laughs> bipolar is demons. It's always been demons, always will be. Now we make sicknesses for everything. And you know what we do to them? We dope them up. We try to take away the demons with dope. Dope is made by the, by the devil. Bless his heart. I love Andrew. He says, says he, he says I'm his best friend. Stephen never said that. His wife's his best friend. His present wife. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> That's the best one to be your best friend. <laughs> Ooh, am I gonna get? Oh boy. The other Barbara Varga besides my wife going to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Casting down. For the weapons of warfare, not cart, mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds, these demon activities. Anybody ever have demons get after them? Oh, yeah. Have you ever had it? You, you better believe me. You too, Gary. He, he, he get you. <laughs> Vern, you ever get them? Do you ever get after you? Yes, sir. Mary? Yes. Yeah. Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Philip, quit looking down. I, 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 you know, I, I, like to, I like to look at people's eyeballs when I preach. I don't like to look at top of head. By the way, it's church. Let's all the men take their hats off in church, please. I'm, I'm going to play Mrs. Uh, that one lady. That, what, what was her name over at... Um, Donnie, what was that lady's name over, over at Dickerson Center? She was nuts about it, man. She was Mrs. Neely's, Neely's friend. She come into church and she said, Get your hat off! Get your hat off! Get your... <laughs> she thought there was some kind of holy thing about it. Now, the Bible does talk. 1 Corinthians 11. About a man having short hair and not having not covering his head in church. First Corinthians 11. The Bible tells that. A woman's supposed to have long hair, a man's supposed to have short hair. That's in the Bible. Don't argue with me. A girl can cover her head, but a guy can't? Yeah. Huh? A girl can cover her head? She has to. Be for submission, she has to show submission. See, the lady, she got nice long hair. That shows she's submissive. I chose submission. Yeah, got ladies. I got ladies with long hair. Yeah. Huh? All right. We ain't gonna do the long hair today. Bringing in the. Okay. Casting down imaginations. Think about. It. Just think now. Try to think right now. I'm going to try to think. I don't like to think it, but 
Try to think of the nastiest thought you ever had in your life. This getting this scary territory, isn't it? Huh? Is this getting scary or what? I don't know about it. You don't know about mine. I don't know about yours. But God knows about all of ours. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought, every thought, verse 5, to the obedience of Christ. Oh, boy. Going to have a clean mind. But mighty through God. Pulling down the strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Yeah. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know what goes right along with this. You ought to memorize this. I had a text out. Maybe you be Christians. I'm back. Hi, I'm back. Devil cut me off for a minute, but I'm back. Pray for us. Pray, church, for it. We'll stay on. Finally, brethren, be strong and learn the power of his might. Might. Put on the whole armor of God. He may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Gird about with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. Above all. Above all. Above all. The shield of faith. Wherewith you be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Faith does it. Faith will save you. And if you're saved... Anything Now, some of you need to be saved. I know people in here that ain't saved because you told me you ain't saved. You need to get saved today. You get saved by faith. Every sin that you've ever committed or could commit or attempted to commit, you don't have to. There hath no temptation taken you, but is common to man. And God is faithful. And will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able. But will with the temptation make a way of escape. A way of escape. A way of escape. That ye may bear it. He'll give you escape every time. You know that. Uh, about how many. Now listen. Let's just be honest in church. You don't have to be. You've got to be honest with yourself. Maybe you don't want to be honest with the preacher. But some of you got some sin. That you keep submitting to. Before you leave this church today, you need to come to the old-fashioned altar, kneel and pray and repent about it. It keeps beating you. It keeps beating you. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's crack cocaine. Maybe it's heroin. Maybe it's sex. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. What keeps getting you? See, preacher, I know I'm saved, but this is one thing or another thing, and I, it's anger, it's this, it's that, it's maybe ten things, I don't know what it is. I'm saved. If you're saved, there's no temptation taking you, but it's common to man, but God is faithful, and will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. How many of you believe you're really saved by faith? You know you're going to heaven. You've been saved. Amen. God bless you. Now, if you've been saved by faith, ain't no sin can get you, but you let it. Someone now, I just... My life is dedicated to helping people every day of my life. All the time. So many people that can't get out of their mess. I set it up for them that they can make it. They don't make it. Why? You choose not to. You choose to stay lost and go to hell, or 
you choose to live in sin as a Christian to be a backslider. You have free will. Don't believe these Calvinists. Calvinists. That's Calvinist is someone that says everything's foreordained. That everything's just the way God's planned out everything and you can't change nothing. That's foolishness. God's given us a free will. How many of you believe God's given us a free will? I believe that with all my heart. God's given us a free will. And you can choose Christ and the blood of Christ. It's a free gift, but you got you got to choose it. Some of you getting nervous. Some of you getting squeamish. This ain't like a lot of the sugar stick sermons you hear around town. Come in feeling good and happy and a bunch of foolishness during church and go out and shake hands with the preacher and see you next Sunday. Oh, yeah. oh that's so nice. If you don't go to church and have some kind of conviction and want to repent, all you do is preach about is repentance. That's all the Bible preaches about. Repentance for a lost sinner, repentance for a Christian. When should you repent? Many times a day as you need to. Amen, Bill? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen, Philip? Amen. Amen, Carl? Amen. Carl's having some battles. I love Carl. Carl's trying hard. Yep. You're going to make it, Carl. Got to hit this bench often. Listen, Carl. When you're out there and about, you come by. Hit that bench out front. Mary won't come with you. Come by yourself. I kneel down out front. I kneel down here. You know why you never come to the repentance bench or out front or here or anywhere? You won't openly repent. You know why? You're a Pharisee. You're a Pharisee. You, you, you say you're better than You ain't better than nobody. We ain't saved or have any victory in our life but by the grace of God and the gift of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ain't no good thing in me. Someone in recent months told me how I'd made mention about someone that doesn't make any difference. How dare you say that? That person's a good person. Ain't none good, no, not one. The Bible says none good, no, not one. They're a good person. They're a righteous person. None righteous, no, not one. None good, no, not one. All have sinned. Only righteousness in me or you is the righteousness that God hath imputed or put into us. But it's him, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Memorize it. Work. Do something. Work. I'm so tired of hearing people. I just someone again I just think of who just fell on their face the last couple of days again. Well, I just can't memorize, Pastor. You can sing all them. Remember the words of them little old rock and roll songs you sing. Huh? Can't remember God's word, but... You remember rock and roll? Huh? For the devil. The devil's got you. People in here, they need to be saved. You better get saved coming this old fashioned now because you don't know. I see, I'm sure he was dead. I ride the loop in, on the way out to Tomoka State Park. And I, I was going on the loop around the river uh, there and, and uh, just happened like boom just before I got there. Motorcycle, it might have been a couple of them. They were out on the road and down and out. They, they must have died because I, I I went around the other way and went way around the route. 45 minutes later, I got there. The morgue was just picking them up. They thought they was going to have a nice, nice Saturday, nice day. Taking a ride on the loop. Dead! All it takes is that split second. You don't even have to make a mistake. 
Someone else make a mistake. If you're on a motorcycle, someone else make a mistake. You're gone. Boom. Uh -uh. I don't ride no motorcycle. God help me. Time is short. Life is short. Got to make sure you're going to heaven. If there's any doubt in your heart today about your salvation, why don't you surrender? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. You know, there's people right in here now. I remember when you told me about when you got saved. And I remember when you testified about it regularly. You know what? Ain't heard nothing from you lately. I'm talking about people sitting here in this auditorium right now. You told me when you got saved. You told me how wonderful it is. And you know what? You ain't said boo. I said, you talking about me? You know if I'm talking about you or not. I don't have to mention the name. You know. Oh, I wonder it was. I got saved. I'm changed. I told my relatives. On and on and on. And now, you ain't got no mention of God. Huh? Come on. I know so many people that are backslidden. Won't talk to me. Won't answer my calls. Ain't got time to talk. I gotta go. <sighs> Most serious salvation. Living for God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy strength. You know, there's nothing you should do in life, period, that doesn't glorify God. You know what that gets rid of, Stephen? Football games. I got rid of them. You know what that gets rid of? Fill up. Fishing if you don't eat the fish. <laughs> How can I get done? Oh, I could get up so many things I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> oh, no. I ain't going to say nothing about you either, Vern. I'm going to get Vern to smile yet today. I'm going to get him to smile or get to this old fashioned altar one or two. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Carl's on the fence. Mary's on the fence. You sleeping, Mary? She is. Hit her on the head, Carl. Don't you be sleeping in church, girl. Oh, that's your put head. All right. Open your eyes, act like you're reading it. God help you. Matthew thinks I'm a crazy preacher. What do you get himself into? Matthew's Sonny. Sonny Faircloth's my good buddy. Faircloth Roofing. And uh, Matthew works with him, his son. He's come to church today to help me. God bless you. Appreciate you being here, Matthew. Glory to God. You know what? I'm old, living on borrowed time. But I'm gonna I'm going out shouting and praising God. Amen. And I, I'm gonna preach the Bible, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. Don't think I worry about what's God gonna say. Don't even phase me when anybody says no there's not a person on the face of this earth that's a human being. If I stay close to God and preach what the Bible says and God tells me to preach, I don't care what you think or they think or I don't care anything about it. My one goal is to glorify God. That's it. Got new people here? Maybe think I'm crazy. That's okay. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. You want to go get your ears tickled, head down the road. I don't care if you come. I hope you come back. But I don't care if you do or not. If you don't want to hear the truth, go get your ears tickled. 
You know, people tell me about what some of these preachers preach. It's a joke, man. I mean, it's a joke. I don't listen to any of them anymore because I just, I just. A lot of people want a crowd. I don't want a crowd. I want people to repent and get saved and live for God. That's all. That's all. Hit the Bible, change the pages. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds. Five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for these dear ones that are here. Some new ones and some that haven't been in a while and come back. We love you. And the wonderful Savior. The rock of ages. The bright morning star. Emmanuel, God with us. Glory to God. I'm saved April 4th, 1969. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You see, I'm a born-again Christian. I have no doubt in my heart that I'm saved for sure. I've been washed in the blood. I don't deserve it, but I got it because I trusted the blood of Christ. Raise your hand. Let me see that. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Others need to be saved. Pray this sinner prayer with me now and you out there on YouTube also. God speaking to your heart. Don't put it off. You never know. Right before my eyes, a couple seconds before I was there, people killed on the road, run over. God help us. This is a prayer if you're not saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross rose in the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, <coughs> receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen. If you got saved today, or you got something to deal with with the Lord at an old-fashioned altar, would you just come right now? Just get up out of your seat and come to the altar. You got to do business with God. Either you got saved today or you need prayer or you're backslidden and you need to confess, whatever. You don't have to tell me nothing. I can't do nothing for you. Only God can. You want to come? Come to an old-fashioned altar. Come on. I ain't going to grill you. I ain't going to belittle you. I'm just going to pray for you. Would you come? Lord, thank you. Thank you that you're a wonderful Savior. Thank you that you're a forgiving Father. Thank you when we sin as a Christian, we can confess our sins, and you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help we make decisions today in regards to things in our life. Bless this evening service. Bring us back at 6, please. Help us, Lord. Bless our church. Bring revival in our church and in our city and in our county. Help us, Lord. Thank you for these that have come, especially new ones. Bless now. Thank you for the food. Bless our time together. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Now listen. Um, we're going to eat, and anybody needs to talk to me, I'm available here. We can just come up here and we can talk after. Are you going to come to the altar after you eat or before or whatever? Uh, that's fine. Don't forget 6 o'clock tonight. I hope you come back. We're going to have more services and things.